How you metal at weatherman? I hope you guys are have have had a great day and are having a good evening right now. So, as you can see, we have Radar Omega up right now. So that means there is stuff actively going on as I'm beginning this video. You can see the red, you can see the red and yellow and kind of gold yellow polygons. We have tornado warnings, tornado watches, and uh, severe thunderstorm warnings as well. It's been not super active, but it looks like things are starting to pick up. In particular, I was concerned about this region because we were wondering if uh, the clouds were going to burn off and there was going to be a little bit of sunlight. This seems like an area that was going to be ripe for some uh, discrete supercells early into the evening, and it definitely looks like that is the case, that is unfolding right now before us. Also, this was an area of interest as well because this is right around where our upper level low is. Plenty of rotation, so. I can see why they issued this tornado watch. Thankfully, there have only been severe thunderstorm warnings, but it looks like there's also been a lot of flooding over here. So we'll take, we'll move this around a little bit. Might look into this tornado warning real quick. If it'll load, there we go. So it's a radar indicated tornado warning. This is off to the Northwest of Charlotte. Expires in 32 minutes. And it's for McDowell County and Burke County in Western North Carolina until 8.30. So radar, again, radar indicated tornado, but still take this seriously because this is an area in particular where the atmospheric parameters are sufficient enough to maybe drop a tornado. And we won't, we probably won't know it's confirmed until the very last second. By that point, we'll, we'll have been doing damage there are a multitude of severe thunderstorm warnings. We're not going to go into that any further because we've still got a little bit to talk about. There is a marginal risk for tomorrow, so we're going to get right into that. Also, while all this is loading, I hope you guys, uh, if you got, hope you guys have been liking what I've been doing. If so, please like, comment, subscribe, share this, get this algorithm up, we, so we can get this info to all the people that need it in the future, in future videos and future severe weather outbreaks. So we do have a marginal risk. It's a very large marginal risk area, but it's mainly for the eastern coastline. For the most part, all the severe weather has started to move offshore. But I think there's going to be a point during the midday where we might get a quick little uptick. When I looked at the forecast models, I saw a lot of convection around the Gulf. It was going to be heading right up this little line here. So. Washington DC, Washington DC, Wilmington, or maybe Wilmington, excuse me, not Wilmington. Still getting used to having to learn about every area, but Washington DC, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Savannah, Charleston. You guys need to be on the lookout for some potential severe weather tomorrow. It's probably going to be local and isolated in nature, but nonetheless, there's still a risk for it. 2% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a given point within the entire within the entire marginal risk area. Wind is pretty much 5%. Hail's going to be the same, or actually less than 5% in all areas. But I have some good news for you guys as well. Right after Thursday, guess what? If we look at day three. Whenever this thing decides to load, guess what? No thunderstorms forecast. We finally get a break. It's been about time. Less than five percent air. Less than five percent in all areas for severe for thunderstorms. Not even severe weather. So this weekend looks to be pretty quiet, which I'm grateful for. A lot of other meteorologists and weather geeks are grateful for. There's still an act, but there still is a little bit of talk about in regards to today, and then. I'll take a quick look into the weather this weekend. So right now what I'm going to take the opportunity to do is take a look at the current situation over where our severe storms are. We do have a low level jet. We do have a little bit of a low level jet. We're looking at winds at about 40 to 50 knots right around, right around where those storms are and it doesn't really increase too much. So there's not a lot of energy within this low level jet it's really lost a lot of steam by this point 
Maybe Virginia might get a little something later tonight. I'm honestly doubtful, but I'm not going to say the chance is zero. And the same thing for the Ohio Valley. There is a little area right here where the uh, low-level jet hits around 50, which is about the bare minimum that you would want for severe weather. So it does kind of meet the uh, it does kind of meet that criteria for for some potentially dangerous storms. Some minor to moderate severe weather is still possible, but I think for the most part, you guys should be all right. We'll take a look at the Cape here, and then we'll take a look at the Southeast as well. Well, actually, this pretty much is all we need to look at here. So actually, I'm gonna close this out. So we're gonna take a look at the Cape now and get a good idea of what we're working with here because I think that's going to be a key factor in who gets what, if anything at all. So we're moving along here. We're going to wait for this to load. And you can definitely see that there still is some, ener some uh, convective energy available. We do have some values that are hitting 1,000, especially around eastern Kentucky. I think any storms that form around eastern Kentucky and maybe West Virginia may have a better chance of going severe versus these. But we still do have uh, values above 500. 500 is about the minimum that you would need. So as we're going to, so but right around here, around Carolinas, we have areas of a thousand as well. So definitely on the lookout for a little bit of severe weather is here as well tonight there is some around south there is some available around south georgia i don't know if this is going to materialize into anything though for the most part this upper level low has moved off a little bit far off to the uh, north and east now so or north and west i would say upper low is actually right about here so it's moved off to the north by a good bit so we're kind of disconnected from the greatest source of energy, if you will. All right, so now that this is loaded, we'll move this forward. And of course, with the daytime heating, the, the heating of the day gone, we lose a lot of that energy. And then towards the coast, you can see that the Cape is building back up around there, which is going to be the last frontier for our storms. So we're going to reach the end of this model run here. And then we're actually going to take a quick look at, at the coast. Uh, Mid-Atlantic. We're going to take a look at the mid-Atlantic mid end of things. And we're going to take a quick look into early into the day tomorrow. And then we're going to take a look at the weather, the weather for the rest of the weekend. For a lot of you guys, it's going to be quiet. But I'll just, I think I'll give everybody a quick forecast. Make this video real short. And then we'll be on our way. So now we're just waiting for it to load. I think the best chance for severe weather is definitely going to be right between this area here. I think that uh, South Georgia, you're, you might have uh, sufficient temperatures for it, but I don't really see, I don't think the chematics, chematics are going to really line up for severe weather, but you never know. It's really easy to be wrong in this kind of business, you know? Really, this isn't always, this isn't like concrete info. This often changes. It's very, uh, this is the business of taking your best educated guess and hoping that you're right, honestly. I mean, I'm not just throwing, I'm not just, uh, throwing my breath around out into the wind. Yeah, this is, this is looking like a little bit of an earlier afternoon, late morning event. And then by the afternoon, it looks like we're, the energy's about gone by that point. So that's something to be thankful for. It's not going to be, I don't expect a major nocturnal event, which is good because the last couple of days we've been having a lot of that. So that being said, let's take a look at our, at our forecast for... Let's take a over like a look at our forecast for the weekend 
we're going to take a quick look at Thursday, just give you guys a brief idea of what the radar will look like going into tomorrow. And then after that, we'll watch how all of this is relatively clear, with the exception of a couple of Clipper systems that will be in play for the North, for the uh, Great Lakes region. So as we watch this go forward, get a nice little shield of rain here around New York and the New England area. Some areas you might see a little bit of wet snow or freezing rain, even a little bit of sleet. You might get a little mix. Right around the Great Lakes around uh, tomorrow afternoon, you have this little clipper that comes in, brings a little snow, and it pushes about as far south as uh, Missouri, maybe even St. Louis. St. Louis might get a few wet snowflakes, but by mid-afternoon, this is pretty much dissolved and turned into all rain. Meanwhile, we have our severe weather going on and just really starting to exit, really starting to exit the country finally. We may have a few scattered severe storms around the Florida, Georgia line. And then on the back side of this system here that's formed up around this little clipper, we have more snow flurries, a little bit of light snow around the Great Lakes region. So we move this along and we get a little bit more rain around the coast. Uh, coastal Carolina and the coast of Georgia for early Friday morning but then right after that look at that we're clear the picture is clear for just about the entire country Maine you might get a little bit of snow out of this little system here on the backside but this isn't gonna last very long you might get a period of heavy snow Great Lakes you're still getting a little bit of snow northern the uh, northern part of Minnesota as well and then before you know it, we're going to be hitting the weekend. Yet a little bit of a system starting to creep back into the Great Lakes. It's that time of year where the lake effect machine is in effect. And by Saturday morning, everything's cleared up. You do, for you guys in the Ohio Valley and the mid-Atlantic, you guys do get a bit of a cool down. But we'll, talk, we'll go more into that about We'll go, uh, I'm just going all over the place with my words, but come tomorrow, we'll go a little bit further in depth about the weekend forecast. Not a whole lot to talk about. Friday, I may not even do a video unless I see something significant in the long range. But that's all I have for you guys tonight. I wonder if this video made it below 10 minutes. Really hope so. If not, dang it. <laughs> but this has been Tiger Metalhead Weatherman. Hopefully you guys are staying safe. You guys stay metal and have a good night. I'm at 13 minutes. Dang. <laughs>